Hello and welcome back to another episode of 20 Somethings Podcast. I am your host, Sarah Birch. And if you're new here, welcome. If you are coming back and you're already a listener, thank you for coming back. I love you. I appreciate you. I'm super excited to talk about this topic today. I actually did some preparation beforehand, a little bit of note taking, which is a really big deal for me because I normally just wing it. But I actually want to have a really important in-depth conversation today about this topic. I want to discuss kind of the overbearing and endless messaging we receive nowadays, especially as we're already trying to, you know, navigate your 20s, which is famously kind of the most difficult, crazy decade of your life, the defining decade, as they say. But now we are bombarded with this messaging mostly through social media, if we're being honest, telling us that we need to be constantly working on ourselves and bettering ourselves, not only through your exterior appearance, which has always kind of been a thing. I feel like especially women have always been expected to be like looking more beautiful, looking more fit, looking more skinny, looking more healthy. But now it's like an internal mission as well to be like constantly bettering yourself and constantly being healthier, happier, more at peace, which overall sounds like a really good thing, right? And I do think overall it is a really good thing. I love that people are finally starting to recognize the importance of mental health. Jobs are finally starting to recognize the importance of mental health. I just stare at myself the whole time and fix my hair like, gosh, I'm such a narcissist. Um, People are finally starting to go to therapy and take therapy seriously. People are finally starting to openly discuss their struggles. So I think overall this shift in the society and the zeitgeist has been really positive. But like anything else on social media, we have gone too far. And every day, all day, I just feel like there are people random people but also people that I do look up to and aspire to and then of course just people in my own life you know friends family everyone and then just myself people just telling me that you know we need to reach our highest potential we need to make the most of every day you know you need to live every day like it's your last you need to be eating clean that alone is a full-time job and a full-time income but anyway Um, You need to be like trying a million different products to fix your so-called issues and your flaws like this moisturizer, this um, ice roller, this supplement, this vitamin, all these miracle products, quote unquote miracle products that they almost feel more like a fad or a trend than like an actual useful, sustainable piece of the missing puzzle as to like why you're not feeling your best or why you're not looking your best like it's normally a lot more simple as to why we're not feeling or looking our best than what social media wants us to believe but anyway we will get into that um you need to be going to therapy at least once a week even though you probably can't afford it you need to be meal prepping every single sunday so that you don't spend all your money on eating out or takeout I'm literally failing at all of these like X, X, X. You need to be drinking at least three liters of water a day, constantly hydrating. You need to be getting at least 10,000 steps in. Also, speaking of the 10,000 steps, guys, I'm an active-ish girly. I mean, I do work from home, so I am somewhat sedentary during the working hours, but I teach dance and I have a dog that I walk at least twice a day. And... Unfortunately, I do live in a city currently, hopefully not for long, where I have to drive everywhere. But I am lucky if I get in 6,000 steps a day. Like, and I'm like busting my ass on my walk trying to get in my extra steps so I can reach 10,000. And girly, it is hard. And I was talking to this girl the other day saying, Oh, I can't believe I'm only at 10,000 steps. Every day I normally get 25. I'm like, Granted, she lives in Toronto, so that it does make a difference. But I'm like, Oh my God. Like, and then I feel like a failure because I'm not reaching my 10,000 steps. And if I can't even get steps in, not to mention a workout and a stretch and Pilates and yoga, work on my balance, work on my this, work on my that, align my chakras, then I'm failing. Because I can't even get in steps, which is like just a basic human thing is to walk and to get in steps. And I can't even do that. Anyway, moving right along. You need to be constantly finding your boundaries, stating your boundaries in a healthy way, maintaining your boundaries with every single person in your life. There needs to be separate boundaries for every single person. You need to never text your ex because that's toxic. You need to never gossip because that's that's toxic. Like 
it's like not fun to be a human anymore, you know, because you almost feel guilty for every single human thing that you do. Like it's normal to sleep in. It's normal to binge eat a lot of cookies when you're on your period. Like it's normal to text your ex if you're feeling alone and insecure. Like I'm not saying all these things are good things to do, but it's also doesn't mean that you're like an unhealthy, tragic person if you're just like existing and doing normal human things that people have been doing for years and years and years. I do think we should always be attempting to break unhealthy like patterns and ideas in society, but to what end? Like, are we making men- people's mental health worse and people's pressure that they feel and people's stress that they feel? Are we making that worse and amplifying that with all of this advice and all of this guidance and all of these expectations of how they should be doing better? It almost feels counterproductive sometimes. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Let me know, comment or leave a review or something if you know what I'm trying to say. And yeah, like just stuff like that, like don't sleep in because you're most productive between like six and eight in the morning, but also make sure you get eight or nine hours of sleep a day or else you won't be productive at all. And like, make sure that you work out at least four times a week, but make sure you also get a lot of rest days because your body needs rest days. And it's like not enough to just lift weights. You also need to be doing stretching and mobility, but it's not enough to just be doing stretching and mobility. You need to also lift weights. It's truly like an endless cycle of what you could be doing better everyone's advice is different everybody's hot take or two cents on what worked for them or what will work for you is different and it used to just be that you would like go to a doctor or like a physician or like a therapist like an actual trained individual trusted person to get advice on how to improve my mental health how do I improve my physical health how do I improve my relationship etc cetera, etc cetera. And I'm not saying Western medicine or doctors should be 100% trusted. That's a whole other debate. But there is something to be said about just like taking one solid game plan or piece of advice and rolling with that versus like scrolling through TikTok and like self-diagnosing yourself and getting a million pieces of advice from all these random people all over the world, girls and guys, age a million different ages, a million different life experiences. I know people are generally pretty careful on TikTok about not saying this will 100% work for you. Like people do try to say like, this is just what worked for me, la la la. And they do all of those sort of prefaces. But at the end of the day, like if you see someone trying some product and it works perfectly on them, of course, you're just going to be like in your delusional brain. You're going to be like, oh, I'm trying that and it's going to work for me. And then maybe it doesn't work for you or you don't see the same results. And then you almost feel... Maybe you don't necessarily feel like you suck or you're failing, but you might feel gypped. Like you might feel like, well, I just wasted 30 bucks on that or I completely fell into the consumerist capitalist trap. Like this is what? Like you're just like, I am a sheep. I am a sheep person. And then you like beat yourself up over that. Oh, even skincare, the toxic nature of skincare. It's like we went so overboard with skincare during covid because people were bored and just like looking for simple ways at home to like take care of themselves and feel good which is which is very wholesome but again it's gone too far now these like 12 year olds have like 12 step skincare routines people are doing all this preventative botox when they're like 19 or 20 like i'm 27 and i don't even feel like i need preventative botox yet like Skincare is another one of those things where you feel like you're always behind. You feel like you can't stay on top of the trends. You don't, the amount of money we're spending to try all of these different things that have promised us like dewy, poreless skin. And then all of a sudden people come out of the woodwork and are like, you're only supposed to be using like two products max or like you're supposed to be recycling your skincare every five days. You're supposed to be not using any skincare at all. Just let your skin breathe like they used to in the prehistoric age. And I think we've all become sheeple. I try my best not to, but I I definitely have moments of being a, a sheep person. TikTok and Instagram, I think, because we've lost a huge sense of like individual identity and individual daily practices and individual routines. Like we're all living the same lives, doing the same thing, chasing after the same goals, wearing the same things, styling our hair the same way, doing our makeup the same way, all trying to like emulate the same ideal And it's like, when did people stop being individuals? I mean, I know when. It's when social media really blew up. 
And I think that also plays into the health and wellness sphere because we're all taking the same advice and we're all trying the same things and investing in the same things when we're all so different. And I think if you like really want to take actual steps towards bettering yourself and revitalizing your health and your wellness, then the actual thing you should be doing is probably consulting your doctor, your therapist, etc. But also learning about yourself and who you are uniquely, like what your body needs, what your body can tolerate, what type of foods sit well with you, what type of foods don't sit well with you, what your blood type is, what your body fat index is, even though I think that's like, I think the BMI thing is like not a thing anymore. I can't keep track. See, I can't keep track. Um, what, how your genetics play a role, what kind of conditions you're predisposed to. I think about this all the time. Like, I actually wonder if I paid a lot more attention to my food, if I would like discover some sort of weird allergy or something, but I'm just not necessarily mindful enough or patient enough to be tracking all my food all the time. But if we really took the time to focus on us as individuals and our vessels and like what's working for us, what's not working for us, what we should actually be concerned about versus what other people are telling us we should be concerned about, I think that's where true health and wellness stems from. And it should be, it shouldn't be a one size fit all program. Like that's, that's not right. It's not right with mental health. It's not right with physical health. It's not right with any anything to do with health in general because we are all extremely unique and we all have different levels of productivity. Like ever since I started taking S- SNRIs, um, of course, it's made me overall like a lot more functional because my anxiety, my depression is a lot more at bay, but it's also made me a lot more sleepy. Like I am a sleepy girl and I need my naps and I can't always make it through a full day without a nap. And I feel so okay with that. You know, like I am a sleepy girl and my brain is working a million miles a minute and I'm trying to self-regulate and I'm battling my own demons all day. So yeah, I'm freaking tired. Okay. And I need a little nap. I need a beauty nap. I need a cat nap. And then, you know, you have... (laughs) people who are like oh you nap a lot or like oh must be nice to nap or like because I work from home so sometimes I can like schedule a lunch break around a nap or whatever or like wow are you sure you're okay like you nap and you nap a lot or like maybe you should go to the gym during that time or whatever and I'm like don't nap shame me and that's the thing it's like I've come to such a place of like self-love and self-acceptance over years and years and years guys this is not an overnight thing where I'm like, if I want a nap, I'm taking a nap and I'm loving that nap and I'm celebrating that nap because that's what my brain needs. That's what my body needs. And that's it. I don't really care if other people are going to judge it or if other people can Oh, I can never nap during the day. I don't know how you do it. I just love to be productive during. Okay. Good for you, Susie. Good for you. I'm going to go nap. So that's just one small example of like me because of my condition and the medication I'm taking to help that condition this is a side effect that I have to deal with and it's like all it's all cyclical it's all related and if people really knew the full story like the minute I tell people oh I'm on a medication for my health and it makes me sleepy so I often have to nap people shut the fuck up right it's like the minute you explain your reasoning people are like oh well then that's great go have your nap and there's there's a balance, right? Of course, you shouldn't be lying in bed all day, every day. And that's the thing. I do think there's actual pieces of advice out there that are like timeless. They've stood the test of time and they are pretty much universal. They work for everybody. Eat healthy, eat your vegetables. You know, all of those things we've been told since I was a little kid. Like I've received those same messages of how to be a healthy person since I was a kid. And that's actually somewhat consoling and like reassuring to me because those are the things I have mostly been focusing on and maintaining throughout my entire life I've always been good at drinking water I've always been good at getting outside I've always been good at socializing and seeing friends but now because of this world we live in of endless messaging of you should also be meditating you should also be stretching half an hour a day you should also be journaling half an hour a day you should also be 
doing your sun salutations half an hour a day. You should also be only eating organic. You should also be drinking your chlorophyll weird green water. You should be taking five different probiotics. Now those basic staples of how to live a healthy life seem so elementary and everything. I'm like, oh, well, uh, okay, now I have to do a million other things to try to be healthy. When sometimes the simple solution is the best and there's a reason that those pieces of advice are actually long-standing and not just like a fad or some sort of idea that comes in for two weeks and dominates the internet and everybody rushes to Amazon to buy it, then it gets sold out and then you never hear about it again. Or you actually finally hear hear people's real reviews on it like months later and they're like, oh, that did nothing or that gave me diarrhea. So yeah, like a lot of the advice that you might be getting or seeing, especially online, is very generalized, right? But people will still jump into it or buy things immediately thinking that it's like some guaranteed quick fix to make them happier or healthier or prettier or whatever. You know, what we talked about, the real solution is going to come from you going on your own individual journey, doing your own research, observing your own body, taking note of your own body. But sometimes that's not as fun as just like hopping on the bandwagon and like trying the same serum that every other person's trying and seeing if it works for you. But it's all part of the like consumerist, capitalist, endless void that we're all stuck in. And I'm stuck in it too. I am not judging. Self-help has now become a trend cycle of like hot tips and tricks or quick fixes that every other facet of living nowadays is also kind of in this fast endless trend cycle because of the pervasive nature of social media and how sort of easily influenced we are we normally function better i think with like a simple one or two step routine that we can actually implement into our day-to-day lives without having to carve out 50 minutes, carve out 30 minutes, carve out 25 minutes, carve out. Because in a perfect world, if we really, really prioritized our time, we would have that time to do those things. We would have time to meditate for 20 minutes a day. We probably would have time to journal for 10 minutes a day. I really, really try to prioritize my mental health and my physical health, and even I don't meditate a lot of the time, even though I promised myself I would. I made this whole, like, deal with myself that I would meditate no matter what, and I and I still don't, because there's days when I just am distracted, or I feel too busy, or I don't feel motivated, and then you, like, beat yourself up again, because it's like, okay, like, I was supposed to meditate, I was supposed to drink four liters of water, I was supposed to get my 10,000 steps in, I didn't do any of that, I'm such a failure, how am I ever going to, you know, have the glow up, the six-month glow up that all these girls are raving about on TikTok so that I can make my ex-boyfriend jealous that that I'm so hot now, <laughs> which is like a whole other thing, and then you just start beating yourself up, and you start feeling like you're failing, or you're falling behind, or you're not productive or you're not disciplined when in reality I think like the whole system is just set up for us to fail and the whole capitalist framework which is essentially making people buy things so that other people can get rich is really especially for women this is not a secret it's harnessed off of our insecurities and our self-doubts and our constant need but also the constant messaging we women and females receive from from media and social media and partners and friends and whatever that we should always be improving we should always be better we should always be accommodating to other people's needs we should always be showing up as the best version of ourselves but i feel like women are on this constant journey of self-improvement and bettering themselves all the time and i've noticed that not only with myself but with all my girlies like my mom my friends my sister every all of us are constantly oh i'm trying this new thing i'm trying this new program i'm going to therapy i'm cutting out all the toxic people from my life i'm going vegan like whatever just women are constantly adapting changing trying new things all in the effort of like whether it's a a real true effort or whether it's kind of just coming from the pressures of other people or society i don't really know but Women are constantly trying to up-level their lives and constantly trying to show up as a better version of themselves, not only for themselves, but for their partners, for their kids, for their friends, for their family, for their, for their employees. Are men doing this? 
At the risk of sounding like the man hater that I apparently am and have branded myself as, which is honestly such a compliment, no, men are coasting. Okay, not all men. I know the odd man, most of them are gay, who go to therapy, who are constantly, you know, trying to better themselves, better their relationships, set healthier standards for themselves. But most men are like, I'm mediocre and I'm fine with that. I am kind of a piece of shit and I'm fine with that because it's gotten me everywhere I need to go in this life. (laughs) Meanwhile, women are like hustling, 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 hustling to like be a better wife, be a better friend, be a better sister, be a better girlfriend, be a better mother. And men literally coast doing the bare minimum. Not all of them. Not all of them. I actually do know quite a few men who really do show up as a total equal partner and are always working on themselves. I think women are just expected to be comfortable with change and comfortable with healing themselves and growing and adapting because just biologically that's just the way our lives are. But I think a huge part of it too is this like unspoken competitive nature within women. And I'm like so guilty of this too. Like I was saying to my mom the other day, when I get a compliment about like my skin or my makeup or my outfit or my personality, it means 10 times more to me if it's from a woman than from a man. And my mom's like, that's like weird. Do you think you're like gay? I'm like, no, I don't mean it like that. It's just men like don't pay attention like men don't care if my skin's extra glowy that day like men aren't gonna ask me what extra steps I've taken like men are just like yeah she's hot you know (laughs) men don't even notice if you cut your hair five inches right so um and men definitely don't understand women's fashion in the same way that women understand women's fashion like if a man hates my outfit I know I look fabulous that day I know I am high fashion fashion week chic Gigi Hadid Okay, like, thank you so much for hating my outfit, boyfriend. Have a good night. If my boyfriend's like, that's hot, it's probably because I'm wearing um, sweatpants and a tank top, which is also fine. But like, I think women have finally embraced the fact that we actually do value the female gaze probably more than the male gaze. And there's this whole scarcity effect and versus abundance effect, which I want to talk about in another episode, but it's kind of the idea that men have an abundance of healthy, healed, committed, loyal, sexy, powerful, smart women. An abundance. They could walk down any corner of the street and find a girl who would be like an amazing girlfriend and do everything for them. Women, on the other hand, it's more of the scarcity effect. These men are scarce. They are hard to find. They are hard to locate. And some of my girlfriends have like really amazing boyfriends. And I don't know if this makes me a wench, but I'm constantly like, just appreciate him. Cause like, you're lucky. (laughs) Like, just, I just want you to know that. Like, don't take him for granted. Cause he is one in a hundred, one in a hundred thousand. Okay. So it's unfortunate that that's the way it is, but a lot of men, they might be decent guys, decent bros, but are they ready to be like a good partner, a loyal partner, a committed partner, going to show up and and impress the woman and reach all of the standards that the woman has and do the little things every day? Like most of the time, no, right? Like a lot of guys have been getting away with doing the bare minimum for the past 50, 60 years, if not more. So they're like, why would I want to change that now? Like my dad got away with this. My grandpa got away with this. And and my mom loved him. My grandma loved him. I'm just glad that women are finally realizing it truly is better to be alone than to be with a partner just for the sake of being with a partner. But he like gives you nothing but headaches and messes to clean up. But anyway, I'm going to try to like tone down my man hater syndrome. It's flaring. It's flaring. I can feel myself itching because it's like flaring up, but it's okay. Anyway, I do think I'm making some valid points, but what does this have to do with health and wellness? Where, how did I get on this topic? Oh, well, I guess, I guess what I was trying to say is that like, I think maybe that whole competitive nature of like, I want to be the best girly out here, the best possible partner, the best possible woman I can be. 
so I can potentially land that one man is probably part of what drives women a little bit more than men to like constantly better ourselves and to constantly want to lose weight. In reality, it's not that simple. Like, and like I said, men don't even realize or recognize half the things that we do on a daily basis just to try to like look good and feel good. And that's why I do like this new trend I'm seeing on TikTok where it's like if you're putting up a fuss over having to spend $25 on our date, because you're the man and you had to pay for it and that's not fair because of, you know, equal rights. Let me just calculate how much my manicure costs, how much my lipstick costs, how much my my self-tanner costs, how much my teeth whitening strips cost. Like <laughs> all these things, my gua sha, my face roller, my perfume, like all these little itty bitty things that women put into just one date just to like show up as the ethereal divine beings that we are costs literally hundreds of dollars and men have no idea like and they just think we are the luckiest little ladies in the world for getting asked out on a date meanwhile it's like a full mission a 10-step routine for us to even get out the door it's not even for the man like of course we want to look good for the guy but i think a huge part of it is we want to like look good for ourselves we want to feel confident we want to feel sexy so that we can shine on our date and leave a good impression If all of those exterior things were stripped away from us, our gadgets and our gizmos and our bits and bobs and our serums and our vitamins and our powders and all of these things, if it was all taken away, like in what ways would we on a very basic level take care of ourselves? Exercising, getting fresh air, drinking water, eating vegetables, sleeping. Like that's it. And it's been the same for like, years and years and years and years like those are the core principles of health and wellness and why are we trying to like commodify it and exaggerate it to this level where people are going to start feeling intimidated and isolated everything people are showing whether it be your get ready with me get dressed with me come to the gym with me do this workout routine with me you know let's go run errands let's meal prep Those videos are really good in theory because they're showing an example of like a productive, successful person like going out in the world and doing things, but it's showing kind of more like the highlight reel of that one person on a one good day having this somewhat curated experience with the goal of impressing you or inspiring you to do the same as them. So it's not a fully realistic representation of what every single one of their days looks like or what every single one of your days is going to look like. And the minute you do start filming something, and this I'm speaking from the heart because I film shit all the time, it becomes less fun. It becomes less real. It becomes less impactful. Like sometimes I've been trying to do my little thrifting videos lately, just honestly for fun. It's just a hobby. And even I'm finding myself like not enjoying the experience experience as much or not finding it as like meditative or enjoyable because I'm focused on my phone and getting the shots and already planning how I'm going to edit it and what the voiceover is going to be like. So just keep that in mind when you're watching these little 30 second clips of people taking on the day is it's not a true representation of what they actually probably eat every day or how many steps they probably get every single day like it's but I love seeing the odd bits and pieces of content of people just keeping it really real being dead honest about what they're actually up to what they're actually eating what they're actually feeling and it makes people feel less alone it's just so counterproductive given this zeitgeist and this cultural norm we live in right now of get up and grind and glow up. If I see the word glow up one more time, I'm going to punch somebody. It's just, I've never felt more like a failure in some ways, even though I'm doing more than I've ever done in my life to try to be like the absolute best version of myself. It still feels like it's never enough, which is just so funny. And I honestly find a lot of the times when you try, you're trying less hard. That's actually when you see more results. Because your cortisol levels drop, you stop stressing so much, you stop overthinking so much, you stop planning and counting and poking and prodding at yourself so much and you just exist. 
and your stress levels and cortisol levels drop and then you actually are able to like sleep better or to lose a little bit of weight or to whatever it is socialize more with your friends whatever it is that you feel like you haven't been able to achieve lately so that's just my advice on that one last little tidbit on a more serious note i wanted to discuss within this whole topic is that there's actually been a rise with this whole resurgence of clean eating and vegan eating and clean living and mindful eating and all of this stuff is the rise of eating disorders but specifically this one type of eating disorder called orthorexia nervosa basically an eating disorder just like any other but it is more like stealthily hidden in a way it's under the idea that you are just a really healthy person And you're just super into like eating clean and taking care of your body. So it is the idea that you have an unhealthy obsession with eating foods that one considers healthy and systematically avoiding specific foods in the belief that they are harmful to you or will cause you to react negatively in whatever way that might mean for you. I mean, I know for me, it would always be, I don't want to gain weight. I don't want to get fat. And I don't even think at this time, this was even like a few years ago, they never said the word orthorexia to me, but that is honestly what I would probably have identified as at that time. I am not that way anymore. I literally have a box of cookies right here at my feet because I'm on my period and I don't feel guilty about that whatsoever. But anyway, I would systematically pack my healthy snacks every day, like for school, I would have like a bag of almonds, an applesauce, some carrots, maybe some hummus if I was feeling crazy that day, Um, maybe a little salad for lunch. And that was it for like the whole day. It was weird because I was like, I was eating and I was packing food and I was technically nourishing myself, but the calories were very limited because I was choosing specifically like calorie safe foods or, or like carb safe foods or whatever. And I was also would feel so guilty and so mad at myself if I did break and I did eat a chocolate bar, especially when I was drunk, I would cave and I would eat McDonald's or something because I was partying, I was in university. And then I would like purge because I would feel so guilty that I like cave and I ate one bad thing that day, I ate a bag of chips or whatever. And I like and it was, but then I would like talk myself. It's like, I just need to get this out of my system. It's like poison in my system. It's like toxic. I need to get it out and then I'll feel better. And honestly, sometimes I would feel better. Um, I, I mean, I can't fully diagnose myself, but I could relate to that definition a little bit. And then I've seen a few women bravely talk about it on TikTok, just saying like, I just thought I was prioritizing my health and being like a healthy girly, a clean girly until I realized I was taking it way too far. And maybe the idea of health actually is balance. It is eating clean and eating your veggies, healthy foods and not processed foods 85% of the time. And that 50% of the time, it's okay to get like a bag of chips. It's okay to pick up a chocolate bar at the grocery store. It's okay to have a few beers when you're out with friends. Like. Is that not more healthy in some ways than eating clean 100% of the time? I don't know. I guess it's up to you. I don't know. Like, I think just my overall advice for, for anybody would be to realize that not one thing is going to break you or make you. There's not one specific product or program or change that you're going to make in your life that's going to just fix everything and or that's going to tear everything down. If you just stop exercising for a few weeks because you're just tired or work is crazy or your kid's sick or whatever it is, your life's not going to be ruined. You're going to be okay. On the flip side, if you start working out starting tomorrow and start working out every day, like it's still going to take a lot of time for you to notice a huge difference. Like It really will. And people don't like to hear that because people want quick fixes and quick um, encouragement and results. Take the route of it being like a fun experimentation, a journey. It's not about the destination. It's about the journey. Like, okay, how about for a few months, I'm going to try these two things to try to better my life. And I'm going to just focus on these two things. Because if I try to do 15 things, I'm going to give up on all of them because I'm going to get overwhelmed and frustrated. So I'm going to focus on two things for the next few months and see if that actually makes a difference or not. 
then a few months later check in with yourself be like okay i think i have these two things down they are now officially like infused into my daily routine they are basically you know i don't even have to think about them now i'm just so good at drinking water and meditating it's good it's programmed into my brain let me add one more thing or two more things in so now i'm gonna try to get one extra walk in a day and like baby steps and that's where you see true change is the accumulation of baby steps and not just doing one huge thing or going on one crazy trip or buying one crazy item but the slow and steady route is not always as glamorous or doesn't you know make as much money or get as many clicks or go as viral but if you want to be serious about your health and wellness then I think that's my best advice not that I'm an expert but I've had a lot of ups and downs with my mental health, with my physical health. As you guys know, I am kind of a perfectionist and I put a lot of freaking pressure on myself to show up as the best version of myself. The older you get, you just get tired, man. You're like, I'm doing my best and I can't wait to see how I naturally and organically continue to grow into my health and wellness and have it evolve with me because I'm going to need a whole separate set of tips and tricks and and go-tos when I'm married or when I'm pregnant and then I'm going to need a whole other set of tips and tricks and go-tos when I'm going through menopause you know like it's just going to be an ever-evolving journey It gives me some peace to think of just those like five or six core principles of health, those basics that we've been reminded about since we were little. And I'm just going to stick with those day in and day out. Those are attainable. Those are simple. And then every once in a while, I'm going to try something a little funky and see what happens. But take the pressure off. Remember, your health and your wellness should overall be a fun and exciting journey. It shouldn't be something that's treacherous. And the act of trying to better yourself should be enough on some days. You know, your 100% on day four is probably going to be very different from your 100% on day 14. And that's okay. Especially if you are a woman and you're going through your four fucking weekly cycles in one month. Like, I'm sure this world would want to beat that out of me and tell me that I still need, that's not an excuse. You still need to eat clean. You still need to hit the gym. You still need to go to work. You still need to put in the hours. You still need to grind. You can't take... Do you have a uterus? Do you shed blood out of your vagina for a week every single month? No? Then you don't get an opinion. Thank you so much. Yeah, so that's that, guys. I'm trying to think if I have anything else. This has been a long-ass episode. No one can guarantee your success. Not even you. If anyone's going to believe in yourself, it does have to be you. But I can't even say to myself, like, I will 100% lose this weight in a month. I'm not putting that pressure on myself. I'm 100% going to stick to this program this month no matter what. Like, I am not doing that to myself. I can't. I'm just not that person. I, like, if you're an anxiety, depressive, girly girl like me, like, that's enough. I got to fight these inner demons every day. I got to fight my anxiety every day. This is Darla, guys. Darla on the podcast. Darla, do you have anything you want to add? (laughs) ASMR with Darla. Guys, she just gave some really sage advice there. I hope you guys caught all that. I hope you took some notes. Thank you so much, Darla, for contributing to the podcast. And I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. It's been over an hour of recording. I'm going to try to trim this down to just the most important parts. I always do this. I always go on and on and on. But I love you guys so much. I genuinely hope you are healthy and happy and doing well. I hope you are taking care of yourself. But remember, that's going to look different and feel different every single day. And that is okay. And anyone trying to convince you that's not okay is probably not okay themselves. Okay. And with that, make sure you like, share, subscribe follow all the things share with a friend share on your story print out posters and put them all over your city of 20 somethings podcast i don't know guys just do what you need to do to help this podcast reach more people and our community can grow and we can all keep it real together 
okay this dog needs a walk clearly so i gotta go i love you guys i will talk to you next time have a good one bye